Hi everyone, uh, my name is Andrei. I'm a software engineer at UiPath. I'm based in Bellevue, Washington. And today we'll be looking at deploying the automation suite onto AWS Cloud when we want to use an internal load balancer. What we have on the screen right now is a simplified view of the topology that we use. And we're gonna break it down a little bit to make it easier to understand. And we'll be looking at a couple of user journeys or user stories. Uh, for a, a very basic one is that as an administrator, I want to be able to monitor, manage, and configure my deployment. And normally, the control plane for the Kubernetes cluster, which sits underneath the automation suite, is private. Uh, so the Kube API load balancer here is a network load balancer, sits inside the private subnet, and you can't have access to it over the internet. So you need to have some kind of either bastion, maybe you have some VPN solution, but definitely as an administrator, you want to have access to those API endpoints while not exposing it to the world. On the other hand, as a user, it's very common that we want to have the application itself uh, available over the internet through an application load balancer, which is uh, both DNS resolvable and routable over the public internet. It's a very common scenario and we see many customers use this. But we also see the fact that more and more, uh, application, the application load balancer needs to be in the private subnet also, meaning that the DNS name will not be internet resolvable and the IP is not routable over the internet. So users need to have some form of VPN let's say private link, or maybe the users are not even uh, human users, maybe they are robots or other systems that need to have access to the UiPath Automation Suite API while in a protected secure environment. And this is quite common. Uh, we will look at how we can easily deploy this using the CloudFormation templates. So our journey is gonna uh, start on the documentation page of UiPath, we navigate to deploy the quick start template, and we're gonna use the uh, deploy automation suite into an existing VPC. I'm gonna navigate to the CloudFormation console in our account, and there are a few prerequisites that are that are required inside the account. So I have them inside uh, in a specific region in Canada Central. I'm gonna click next. And we're gonna look at what those prerequisites are and we will gather them. Uh, so we deploy into an existing VPC. So we need to have the CIDR, which is there already. Uh, our CIDRs are always uh, in a slash 16. And we need the VPC ID, which is the private host is on one. Uh, obviously, we don't need any public subnets, so we just get the uh, private ones. So, uh, from the subnets, on the right-hand side, we have the VPC uh, management console. In the subnets, I'm going to copy and paste my private subnets, uh, comma separated. There are three. I'm going to copy and paste all of them. And this is going to be specific to each account. We obviously cannot deploy a bastion because we don't have any public subnets in our deployment. Uh, my instance key is going to be this one. I'm going to skip over most of the parameters. We can just leave them as default. And the next thing we need to look at are the private host zone and the ACM. So the private host zone is going to be in the drop down. Uh, it's going to be private, uipathmarketplace.net. And let's say that is going to be test uh, private dot private dot uipathmarketplace.net. And if we want uh, the uh, internal load balancer is going to be true. If we want to use a level seven load balancer, which is going to give us uh, as SSL termination and it's going to handle certificates for us, it's probably a good idea to use uh, uh, the user uh, hosted certificate. And for this, we need to have it pre-prepared. Remember that this is a private hosted zone, so we can't generate a certificate at runtime. 
because we cannot use that yen as verification method. So on my right hand side, I, I have already opened my AWS Certificate Manager console. And this is the certificate ID. And this is the ARN that I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, the uh, certificate is uh, for our particular case. We reuse the certificate for our deployment in testing. But in your case, you'd probably have a certificate created specifically for the hosting FQDN. Uh, the, you can have the AWS uh, certification authority or a private certification authority uh, that is yours to decide. There is one more thing, though, that needs to be addressed, which is the fact that the private hosted zone needs to be accessible in the VPC. And in our case, uh, this private hosted zone, which is not, a, again, routable on the internet, is associated with the VPC in which we deploy. This is the second prerequisite, which is that you should be aware of. But by and large, this is about it. Uh, all the other uh, parameters I'm going to leave as default. I'm going to click Next. We're going to reach the very last page. I will acknowledge. I will not start the deployment, though, because it's going to take probably, in a single node, it's going to take about an hour. And we have a deployment already, which I've created beforehand. And this is the FQDN we're using. And this FQDN, obviously, is not going to be uh, available for my machine. So uh, if I try to resolve it, I will get no answers from my machine. But I do have an RDP session onto a server which is inside the VPC. And in on, uh, let me move this here. And from this server, the exact same command uh, produces results. So I get uh, the Route 53 DNS server returns the fact that this URL is resolved to two public uh, private IPs which are the private IPs of the uh, application load balancer. And let's see if I can do this. Uh, the certificate, is, the URL is available and the certificate is valid. Uh, we also have edge and we see the fact that indeed from the private, from the VPC, the endpoint is available, is DNS resolvable, and we have a route towards it. And that is about it. Uh, thank you, and see you next time.